to take that vine <clears throat> that I found earlier and what you want to do is trace it not trace it but you want to follow it to see where it goes before I used to like haphazardly cut and I cut more than what I wanted to so I like to look and see where it's going so this vine is right here I'm gonna move this to the side so you can see and it goes right into the pot right here it has this one long leaf there now it's a couple places that you can cut the number one rule to taking a cutting is to make sure you cut below the node so I'm gonna come in here you can see right here this big bump it's easy to find the nodes they just look like bumps like brown little bumps and if you feel it it's a raised portion since the stem going into the pot from here is kind of thin I'm gonna cut right here okay and there you have your cutting of the micans. So now there's a couple different things you can do. I just use whatever scissors I have. I don't have actual uh, gardening shears, but I did clean these before I used them. And you wanna clean them before and after. So this was the original node that I cut underneath. You can see that right here. So now you have this vine that looks like this. I personally like to put the entire vine in the water because when I pot it up, I like to have a long trailing piece. However, if you want to take a vine like this and start um, a pot that will eventually be fuller, what you can do is cut each individual leaf. So what you wanna do is find a node, okay? okay. This bumpy part right here, that's the node. And then you wanna give about an inch of stem from that node and cut. So then you will cut here, clip. So then we're gonna keep going. This here, anytime you have bare stem like this, even though it's a node right here that may put out roots, in my experience, the rest of the stem is just not going to do what you want it to do. So you've made your cut right here. Then you're gonna come up here. Then you're gonna cut right here. Right here is your node. You always wanna have a node with your leaf. This section of stem in between these two cuts you're gonna discard that, you're gonna get rid of that. So then you're gonna come here, you're gonna do another cut right here. You have a leaf, you have a node, that's your node. You can feel it, this little brown bumpy part, that's your node, those are your nodes. You're gonna cut right here. You're gonna come up here, again, you're gonna cut right here. Come up here, same thing. Every time you cut, you wanna make sure you have, where your leaf is, you wanna make sure you have a node, okay? Um, you don't need to cut very close. About an inch is what you can do. Any bare pieces of stem in between, as I said, you can just discard those. For the purposes of this vine, I'm not going to cut it because I like to have it, like I said, like a vine. I will do one just to show you. So, like I said, you want to find your node. You have your node right here. You're going to come in here, leave yourself about an inch, take those scissors, cut. So now you have this one to grow roots. Then you have the rest of this one. And then for the purposes of what else I was gonna show you, I'm gonna trim up here. You see this node? This is where I'm gonna encourage my roots to come from. Give it about an inch. I'm gonna cut there. This piece of stem, as I said, although it has a node in here, I've experienced enough times that when it's just the stem with a node, it'll put out some roots but it'll actually end up, end up rotting in the water. So I discard that. And now you're left with this vine here because that's the way that I prefer for it to be. Um, I wanna leave this together. I'm gonna to put that in there. And then if you're going the route of cutting each individual leaf to fill a pot, as I said, this is how your cutting is going to basically look. You're gonna have a node, a section that's gonna produce roots for you and then you're gonna cut about an inch of stem away from that. And then there's that cutting. So now I'm gonna show you essentially just how you pop it in the water and just set it to grow its roots. All right, so here are um, some containers that I have that I use for propagation. This one is a recycled bottle. I think I had um, some sparkling water, maybe a soda in there. And it was glass, I like the shape of it, so I kept it. And then this little setup here, I think they're called, these are technically called bud vases. I got those. They came in that stand from Dollar General. They were on clearance. So I think I paid like $4 for them. And I really like the look of them. And so I use them 
to propagate. So this one has water in there. So you're gonna take your cutting and you're going to get your water source and then you're just gonna take it and push it down in there and then that's it. You wanna make sure that the node is completely covered in water. And I have a cutting of adamant sonii um, on the other side over there. So I'm gonna show you right here for this one. When you have a longer vine such as this, and these, again, this is how I like to propagate them. I take the end and I stick it down in as far as it'll go, always leaving uh, the leaves that are on there at the top and sticking out. I've had several times where, as you can see here, there are two node points that end up that will be submerged. I've had roots grow from both node points. I've had roots grow from only one. So I think it really just depends, but this is how I do it. And I'm always 90, like I would say 98% successful with my water propagations. I've only had higher than that because I've only had three propagations that did not, um, that didn't work. And I think it was because I took one, um, the leaves were not mature enough. The cutting I took was not mature enough. And then on um, the other one, I don't think that I did a node properly. And that was in the beginning when I first started to do this. So push it in there down to, you know, where all the leaves are outside of mommy, the water. Mommy. And then, yes. Mommy. Hold on, I'm almost done, okay? Then I'm gonna say here, <laughs> this is funny to me. This came with um, a kit my son wanted to buy from all these, it was a funnel cake kit. And I just thought, this looks like a watering can, so I kept it for that. So anyway, I'm gonna take that and Mom. just gonna go ahead and <coughs> fill up the water bottle or whatever you have it in. I personally like to propagate in glass. I don't know the science behind it. It's just my mommy, preference. Mommy, mommy, I do know mommy, that there's a belief that the darker glass, tinted glass, or putting mommy, this inside of like a cash pot or something, mommy. that the darkness encourages the roots because it makes them feel like they're um, in soil. I've propagated in tinted glass as well. And um, I haven't seen much of a difference. So that's that. So here you go. You have it in there in the water and you just take that and you just set it on the shelf. I don't place my water propagations anywhere uh, special. If you look on my Instagram, which is also um, Green Thumbish, or if you've seen, I have a video on here called What's Propagating, where I show everything I have in water propagation. I just keep them on my um, TV stand, which is in my front room, which happens to be the brightest room in my house, but I have water propagations everywhere. I have them in the kitchen, in my bedroom, in the bathroom. So as far as lighting goes, I don't pay too much attention to that. But of course, plants like, yes, there's some in my son's room too. But of course, you know, plants like light. So I will definitely put it somewhere where it can get some level of light. But you just want to set it and just leave it alone. Um, you really should change the water like once a week. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't always keep up with that. Um, so you just want to pay attention to that. Sometimes what I end up doing is if I see the level is getting a little low, I'll go ahead and add some more water into it. But if the water is starting to look like foggy and yucky, which has happened when a uh, stem has started to like rot in there, the one or two times that that happened to me, I'll dump the whole thing out, wash it out, and then put it back in the water. So that's my easy... Um, little guide for how to propagate trailing plants for beginners and that's really all you have to do these here um have water in them because i just took cuttings i had in here and put them in soil but this is another glass jar this came from a mister and i just i have too many plants to use a little mister like this anymore so i use the glass bottom for propagation and then this was a little um tequila shot bottle i like the shape of it so I kept that, but I pretty much recycle um, all glass containers that I have. I have pickle jars, spaghetti jars, whatever sauce I get that comes in glass. I clean the jar and I keep it and I use it for um, water propagations. And then also I do go thrifting. I have a video on that. I'm showing all of my thrifted plant accessories. I go thrifting and I find different glass.
I was going to show you this one real quick. This is actually one of my favorites. This is, I think it's a replica, but it's a, um, a vintage decanter. And it has, you can see like the etched ship on this side and the eagle on that side. And it's green tinted glass. So I thrifted that one, but that's another thing that I would also use for propagation. So that's basically what I do um, for my propagations. Let me know in the comments if you prefer propagations um, in water or in soil. I don't really do soil. I have two pots that I did directly into soil. There were cuttings from Marble Queen Pothos and I put those directly into soil. Otherwise, um, I put them in water because I like to watch the roots develop and I think it looks nice around the house. So um, let me know which one you prefer. What things do you have propagating right now? Let me know in the comments. Is there a plant um, as a beginner or, you know, not so, um, not if you're not a person that usually propagates your plants, let me know if there's a different type of plant that you want to see me show you how to propagate. I have a lot of different varieties of plants at the, um, by this point, so I can put together some different things to show you all if the interest is there. So let me know in the comments what you think, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.